Hello, and welcome to the Disconnected Gamers Podcast, where we reconnect with life and gaming. I am one of your hosts, Andrew, also known as J Bond, sometimes known as So After I Said, with me as always. As always, is your boy, everyone's favorite person, or should be. Yeah, the man you love to, the man you love to not be able to follow on Twitter. <laughs> right, the man you love to hate, yeah, boy. But don't follow him though. Uh, don't follow him. <laughs> um, nitty gritty. It is Sunday, April sixteenth, also known as uh, Easter, also right. known as Zombie Jesus Day, also known as just eat a bunch of candy, or for a good majority of the world, Sunday. Um, yep. it's just a day to some people. I personally don't care. Just I get to eat a lot of chocolate and food, and you know what? Didn't even have to dress up. Right. So there's Boom. that. Uh, it is episode 84. Um, mm-hmm. Moving forward from last last episode. Had Hug on there. We talked about Mass Effect. We talked about Atlas. It was funny is that we talked about Atlas with Persona. Yep. And then, like... And then in between that episode and now, Atlas posted that whole thing basically saying, like, you can't stream Persona 5, don't post anything Ooh. about it, we're going to ban you, we're going to, you know, do all this yep. junk. And <sighs> that sucks for people that wanted to stream it. What's But it sucks for content creators in general because... Yeah, because if that's their job, like, like, they can't... Like, that's how you make your living. This is a huge game. It's very exciting for people. And, or, you know, and I won't speak generally to some people. I know that JRPGs isn't a giant market. However, Persona's got to be in the top five for NPD, um, mm-hmm. you know, for games for the month or whatever. I would not be shocked to see it. Um, right. I'm sure Breath of the Wild is probably still up there. You know, it's weird. I saw somebody and I don't, I, I, I don't know how true it is, but somebody said that Nintendo sold more copies of Breath of the Wild than they've sold Nintendo Switches. And like not like I don't think they were counting the Wii U ones. I don't. I think they were literally like people bought Breath of the Wild that don't even have a Switch. Wild, correct. Yeah, I saw some article. People were like I didn't have a Switch yet, but I bought the game anyways because right. I knew I was getting one. Right. So, I also imagine I some people they, bought. Was there a collector's edition? Yeah, like a had like a sweet Master Sword statue, or whatever. It was yeah. Cool. So I wonder if people bought the collector's edition and then like a, a generic copy just so they had something generic right you hmm. know you keep the collector's edition sealed and then you buy the regular you buy the play. Hmm. i still gotta put up some sort of shelving that i can hang stuff on <laughs> I that way, enough. whatever editions or whatever. Well, it's just all the like random stuff that I have, like, or and it would entice me to want to buy them at some point because if I had them, I would be more likely to consider it. But since I don't have really any space to put them up, I always find that collector's editions don't really appeal to me. Yeah. I also wonder how that's going to work in the future. Like, as games go more digital, like how. Are you going to, like, is GameStop just going to become a place that fucking sells knickknacks, right? Like, and I think... I mean, they already kind of are. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, and I think Hug talked about it last week, too, where he was just like, they just sell a bunch of knickknacks. Like, they're basically fucking Spencer's 2.0. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. You know, get they're get your sweet, a... get your sweet kick-ass t-shirts and games. Yeah. It's like a kid-friendly Spencer's, essentially. Yeah. Fucking, oh my god. Uh... What is, does Spencer still exist? Yep. Oh. Yes, I do. I'm surprised. I thought, like, Hot Topic finally crushed them. Nope. <sighs> um, so, so yeah, so to go back to, to get back on track, because I'm terrible with staying on track. I think everybody knows this by now. Uh, Atlas has basically issued a a very direct, it's not, I wouldn't even call it a warning. I call it a threat because they're basically saying, look, if you broadcast this game, we will, you know, take Murder. appropriate action to ban you. And it's crazy that it's actually like, and I'll pull it up. Um, I want to pull it up on their, what, like, and read, read their yeah. website because, like, it's so absolutely crazy. Because um, it starts out innocent. It's literally like, we will ban your account. 
or take some kind of action if you spoil anything for anybody. Crap, now I don't know how to find it. Which, I had Googled it. I kind of understand. I get it from both sides. It's like they've taken so long to make this game. There were delays, and then, okay, well... Got it. You know, no one knows about this game yet, so we want people to... People to what? Tells, but just how the game is. Uh, no, you cut it. Time, you, you cut out for a second. You said you want people to, and then it stopped for a sec. Oh, the, they want people to find out about the game, but you know, not everyone can afford a fifty nine ninety nine dollar game. Thus, right. that's where the streamers come in. That's where the content creators come in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Word of advice to newcomers to the game: Deep breath. Make sure to check your calendar and not wait until the very last day to steal someone's treasure. Remember to send out a calling card beforehand, or else only profound sadness awaits. Oh, and save often. Okay. Okay. Now let's. Do, okay. So there again. This is from Atlas. dot com. It's just like on their website. Mm-hmm. On, like, their blog or whatever. Okay, now let's talk Persona 5 streaming and video. Simply put, we don't want the experience to be spoiled for people who haven't played the game. Our fans have waited years for the game to come out, and we really want to make sure... Excuse me. They can experience it fully as a totally new adventure. Please read our video streaming guidelines below. Please, comma, please, in all caps, do not post any specific plot points or story spoilers and only talk about the game in broad strokes. In parentheses, good example. The game deals with dark themes right off the bat with a lecherous teacher and other corrupted individuals. Bad example. Players immediately run into trouble with the pervy teacher spoiler whose actions go so far as to cause spoiler. Uh, you're more than welcome to talk slash show confidants the new combat, comma, the Velvet Room, comma, the Dungeons, comma, etc. Just please keep in mind that as a singular story playthrough, viewers are highly weary of spoilers. In-game content limit. Please limit video content through the in-game date of 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, video game, video, and now there's like a breakdown for video content. You can post however many additional videos you'd like, but please limit each to be at most 90 minutes long. No major story spoilers, and I'll leave that up to your good judgment. If you need some guidelines, avoid showing spoiling the ending segments of the first three palaces. While you can show initial interaction with Yusuke. Did I get that right? Is that how you pronounce it? Yus- Yusuke. Yusuke. But you're, ah. you're close. You're close. <clears throat> it's like Asuka, but it's not pronounced that. Asuka. Um, avoid his awakening scene and that whole deal about the painting. Also, don't post anything about a certain student investigator. Uh, I know I mentioned not showing the end of each palace, but you can grab footage from the Kamoshida boss fight. However, don't capture video from other major boss fights. Must not focus solely on cutscenes slash animated scenes. Should prominently feature dungeon crawling slash spending time in Tokyo. You can post straight gameplay or have commentary. Streaming content... This being a Japanese title with a single playthrough story means our masters in Japan are very wary about it. Sharing is currently blocked through the native PS4 UI, which, again, to reiterate, that is something that PlayStation allows developers to mm-hmm. do. They can allow... Whoops. Oh, that was my phone. Damn it. Uh, PlayStation allows the developers to have the option of whether or not they want the share button to work. So in this instance, Atlas has opted to disable it. I don't know if it is functional now, but um, are you turning it on to find out? (laughs) Uh, However, if you do plan on streaming, video guidelines above apply except length. If you do decide to stream past 7 slash 7, in parentheses, all caps, I highly recommend not doing this, comma, you have been warned, in parentheses. You do Mm -hmm. so at the risk of being issued a content ID claim or worse, a channel strike slash account suspension. That being said, Persona 5 is a super special case for us, and we're in ongoing discussion about how our policies may evolve in the future. Thanks for reading, and good luck in the metaverse. I'm assuming the metaverse is like the Midnight Channel? Uh, yeah, similar. similar. Okay. Um, and that's the end of the post. Now, they, I believe, oh, that's weird. I don't see comments on this, but, oh, there's no comments, which means they either disabled comments or 
I imagine disabled comments. Because you know there's gonna be some guy that's oh so and so dies in chapter or whatever. Oh, that's true. They you know? could somebody could yeah. totally be like, yeah, fuck you, spoiler this. Um, yeah. And I mean, obviously, like we were talking about how Nintendo just bans people or doesn't ban people but takes the Straight majority. Com- yeah, yeah, they take strike. they just content strike and take your money. Um, that's mm-hmm. super super bummer. That Atlas has taken this kind of approach because, like, when I when I received a copy of uh, Ultimax, Ultimax, yeah, they did the not, game. yeah, the fighting one, they didn't have any kind of guidelines like that. And I get that that's a different. It's different because that was still Persona Four, and everyone knew the story. I think by right. then, so they didn't care. They didn't care. Yeah. Um. But it's very weird. And I think it's interesting that they do at least acknowledge at the end of this post, it's a super special case and we're in ongoing discussion about how the policies may evolve. Like, at least they're, they probably are like, hey, we get this, it's probably going to piss you off. But just FYI, like, we may change, change this in yeah. the future. And hopefully they do. Like, I'm hoping that in, like, a month or two they'll be like, okay, cool. Game's been out for a month or two. Everyone's like, played it. Yeah, yeah, pe- yeah, people yeah. who wanted to play it have played it. If not, you know, tough shit, basically. Because it's like, that's super unfair to basically handicap a ton of content creators who might really want to play this game for their viewers, or their viewers may really want to see them play it. Um, you know, it's because the, what, the last Persona JRPG would have been the one on the Vita? Yeah, Golden. Yeah, gold. So, like, that would have been impossible to stream unless you'd got one of those custom Vitas with the HDMI out, and, like, that's just a hassle. So, like, let's just assume that people weren't able to stream that one. So now you finally got one that you can stream on next-gen consoles. It's going to be a whole new thing. It's going to be fun. And now they're just like, oh, by the way, no. Like, could you imagine if basically Bungie said, like, hey, listen, Destiny 2, it's coming out, but you can't stream past uh, Light Level 10? Right. Yeah. yeah. Can't can't stream past the fourth the fourth mission. Like that'd be insane. You know. Um. So for me, it's like, it's, like a, it's a huge bummer. It's yeah, I know, right? It's not like this isn't gonna make me not play the game. Um. Right. I will still buy this and play it. I'm just so. I haven't really been playing games a lot, man. I've been. Swark. Work and then I've been I've been Same. going to the range a lot because I just it's gets me out of the house and it's you know i'm hanging out with a friend or two and we're just like we're out there talk like we're out at the range like talking and chatting about stuff Mm -hmm. and shooting guns which is fun but uh it's just like it gets me out of the house so that i'm not just kind of always in here in my room like staring at the tv screen Uh, right so like there's that plus now that the weather is warmer i'm outside in the yard trying to get the yard looking good again because it's just like a perpetual battle of <laughs> trying to make the yard look okay. And like what's great is because I did so much work last summer and into the fall. Um, I don't have a lot of work to like catch up on out there. It's more mm-hmm. just like picking up all the broken debris from the winter. Right. A little bit of raking for some stubborn leaves that still haven't kind of gone, gone out of there. And then I had a... The, head, the trimming the hedges and all the like the bushes and stuff like that's just like which is like which is than, yeah like that's like i had to do like the first i got to do like the first cut back of the season and then mm-hmm. hopefully everything kind of grows in and blooms and then i gotta order a shit ton of dirt <laughs> i like i and like last last summer i'm sure i was talking about it where like i was getting the free dirt but like having to shovel a truckload of dirt and then come home, unshovel it and then go back and get like a couple loads of dirt. Like now working as many hours as I do. Like, I don't have the time for that. Cuts into, cuts into my, cuts into my day of, of trying to manage that. Plus trying to play video games. Like I've been trying to play gravity rush, but like I like playing it for an hour at a time feels awkward. Cause I feel like Mm -hmm. I'm so it's, I'm playing it in such a, a jagged, like, dysfunctional way that like I can't enjoy the story because when I used to play it on Vita I would play for hours at a time and right. like only being able to sit there and play for like an hour hour and a half takes a lot out of it because like I it's like with me and Zelda like I come back into it and I'm like what exactly was I doing when I came back to this because I'm not playing enough of the story 
at one time to kind of have a clue of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to just, I'll jump in, I'll do like one or two side missions and then I'll try and do a story mission and then like, that's it. And then I'm out. Mm. Because usually by then I'm like, oh crap, there's other stuff I got to do. Like got to catch up on this, got to email somebody, got to right move on down the line gotta do that business mm. um and like now that uh so e3 is coming up in june and then oh, pax west planning and stuff has already started because pax uh pax west panel submissions have opened they opened uh last week i want to say they tweeted so i've already started to work on that so the positivity panel will Will happen yet mm -hmm. again, hopefully. I mean, obviously, nothing's set in stone, um, mm -hmm. but we're in the process of of getting that all together. Everybody's kind of we're trying to like do something, do the same thing, but do it a little bit differently. Because I have Different. some, I have some, I have some ideas about how to like how we can kind of change the focus of how we present everything, rather than kind of just kind of mm -hmm. going one by one by one down the line. And right. so, I shot out an email to everybody. And was just like, hey, like, I just want to get the ball rolling on this now. Actually, it was somebody who, one of the, uh, Craig uh, at Able Games, he actually emailed me first and was like, hey, like, I don't know if you saw this. And I was like, I actually did. I was going to send an email out. Him. But he was, he sent me an email first and, and we CC'd everybody. And like, so now we've got a, an email thread that's already in progress of just like us bouncing ideas back and forth. Nice. So it's, it's nice because I think we're going to try and make it a little bit bigger. Um, I think we might have some additional people. We've already got one new person. I don't want to talk about it too much because obviously, like, we're months out. And, yeah, all right. But yeah. um, you don't know, get too much away. It's yeah. cool that we're planning stuff and like we're, there's like cross a lot of cross pollination of ideas, which is happening, and I'm a big fan of that. Like, I like when like I throw an idea out and then somebody's like, "Ooh, that's a good idea," but what if we did this? And then they send it back, and I'm like, "I like it. Let's do that." And then somebody's like, "Cool. If we do that, can I do this?" And I'm like, yep, do it, mm -hmm. like it. Um, and so, like, I have a neat idea on my end of something to do in the process of everyone else also collaborating. So it's just nice. It's nice to have that collaboration on a, on something like this, especially where, like, it's a project that's very, like, the panel itself is very close to me. Um, right. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens. And I think if we can make it a little bit bigger than it is now, like, there's no way we can't continue to have this be a, a rolling thing that kind of evolves and maybe something comes out of it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. it's true, it's true. So that's an aside to this. We just kind of went on a tangent about it, but it, it takes a lot of like, it takes a lot out of me to do all that stuff. Plus working. Cause you just get home and you're tired. And it's like, the last thing I want to do is yeah. have to like mentally, mentally focus on a video game that has a lot of stuff going on. So then I'm just like, I'm going to uh, play overwatch well, or I'm going to play yeah. it's, hearthstone on it's my phone jump and, on and eat chicken. Wildlands and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Going to wildlands and just snipe people just shooting stuff. Yeah. Um, Which we should play. That soon. We should actually, actually my friend had texted me earlier. He wants to play. So we should probably do that. Um, cool. Yeah. So that's so Atlas persona, like, sucks but obviously like you're you're playing it you like it oh, have you beat it yet not yet i'm many... it's like i'm i'm a slow crawl okay how how many hours do you think you have in it now probably definitely over 100 i'd imagine damn damn mm -hmm. that's a lot that's a lot of hours but, hey man, I gotta run a social life while trying to do stuff. Yeah, so. I know. Uh, and so, it, and does that have any optimization for the pro? Because you have the pro. Uh, I mean, I think I have boost modes on. I haven't noticed anything crazy. Mm. I didn't know if it was like when, uh, like Horizon Zero Dawn had the like optimized for performance or frame rate or whatever or resolution. Oh right, right, yeah, they got the they actually had the like modes. a mode for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Nothing like that. Nah. Nah, nah, nah. Uh, the only, so the only other topic I wanted to briefly touch on, and then we can get to the last topic, which will probably be 
the, the bulk of this is. Uh, so Nintendo's discontinuing the NES Classic. Mm. In the United oh. States, it seems. So I so that's the thing, right? So I've seen that there's nothing specifically stating that the mm. NES Famicom edition that's in like Europe and other territories has been discontinued as well. I've just seen definitively that there will be no more shipments to the United States or North America, <laughs> I suppose. Um, so you could still order one online, just not. Yeah. Through a U.S. retailer. Hmm. Right. So that's the thing, right? Any so why? Or... Well, so there was. So this is a this is a Wired dot com article that came out on the fourteenth, so two days ago, and it just it's titled "Discontinuing the NES Classic." Is uh, NES Classic is a classic Nintendo mistake. It's written by Julie Muncy, um, and. So she, uh, she's got, per a statement to IGN, the last shipments of the product will go out this April. And then this quote from a Nintendo representative says, NES Classic Edition wasn't intended to be an ongoing long-term product. Which the, uh, Julie says, like, that's a, um, that's a detail they might have considered publicizing before they stopped making them. Like, you should have started with, we're introducing a limited run of the NES Classic. Mm -hmm. You know, supplies may be limited, and we're only going to be doing it for so long, so whatever. I know that it was going right. was announced before Christmas, seemed like a great Christmas idea. Impossible to get. Really hard to get. You know, um, they claimed they had production issues but that's really dumb yeah nintendo says that they were not expecting the high demand and <sighs> then couldn't produce enough units which is weird because they said in january they'd sold 1.5 million units hmm. that's pretty damn good for something that's like 60 bucks right so, um, you know, I get that the Switch just came out and Switch has Virtual Console and maybe they just want people to buy the games on the Switch because that's probably more money for them getting mm -hmm. five to fucking ten bucks a piece for these games that they haven't had to do anything other than port. Um, right. Rather than 60 bucks on this controller and box that play 30 preloaded games. So to, yeah. me, to, to me, personally, I don't understand why you would cancel it either. I say figure out the supply issue and basically mm -hmm. say, like, listen, we're going to continue it as a thing. And it'll continue to be 60 bucks, But bear with mm -hmm. us as we deal with the supply. Because... I see the Sega Genesis ones. I see the little Namco things. Like, I've seen these mm -hmm. things. You see them right. in Walgreens. You see them in, like, CVS or whatever. And it's like, plug into right. your TV, your AV, whatever, and then boom. But, like, this one is an HDMI, and it's it's NES licensed, and it's NES branded. Like, it's literally the perfect way to give people like me who played these games growing up and people older than me who played these games growing up, to jump back into it in a really easy, digestible way. Like, 60 bucks, mm -hmm. throw it in your cabinet, pull it out every once in a while when you have a party with friends and you be like, hey, remember ice hockey back in the day? Or Blades of Steel, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know? Let's go. Rather than being like, hey, buy a $300 Nintendo Switch and then pay like 5 to 10 bucks a piece on Virtual Console. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like I, th I think that because like I, my brother's got one of the Sega Genesis ones, which the benefit of that Sega Genesis one is that it also plays cards. Th yeah, it actually has the cartridge slot like you can play the games on it. Um, mm -hmm. And then it also it came with two wireless controllers, which are complete shit, um, yep. but it still had the controller port. So we just used our old Sega Genesis controllers on nice. it. Um, doesn't work with 32X, but that's fine. Um, I don't think it worked with uh, Sonic and Knuckles either. Sonic and Knuckles. Like I don't think you can play Sonic and Knuckles, but you can't play like with an. Can't do the. Top. 
Yeah. To play as like Knuckle. I don't think it I don't think it's quite designed for that. But still a great idea, you know? And same mm-hmm. thing. It had like I think I think the Sega Genesis one has like sixty games on it, but um it just seems like such a miss. Like it seems yeah. like another in, in like they call it the Wired article says is a classic Nintendo mistake. A hundred percent. Nintendo's always doing stuff and then being like, oh wait, just kidding, this is dumb. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> like if your your issue is not that you're not selling them. Your issue is that you can't sell them because so many people want them. They are isn't enough. That's like mm-hmm. the best. That is the best problem to have as a purveyor of a product that you cannot manufacture them fast enough to sell. Mm-hmm. So you ramp up production, you quell the demand, and then as it tapers off, you lower production back to what it was probably right now, and then you probably sell them consistently for a while. Great gift to give to somebody for like cheap money. Yeah. You know, 60 exactly. bucks, 60 bucks is one video game. Tons of people are going to say, wait, you're telling me for the cost of Persona 5 I can get an old NES and play like 30 games from, from like the old days? Why wouldn't so, you? Such a no-brainer. Right? And it's small enough that you can literally bring it to a friend's house and be like, yo, let's play Mario. Like, it's so, it's just so easy. But, mm. you know, you discontinue, yep. you, discontinue the, you. you discontinue the Wii U and pull all the inventory. That's like the that another another thing that doesn't make any sense to me why they pulled the inventory. Like I would have at least left it sold all out and just sold it out and then been like, look, if yeah. we don't if you know, if you want a different Wii U, like this is all we're getting. They're not gonna be sending any more. They've halted right. production. Like it seems like again, like you're whitewashing if you're whitewashing your your mistake, but in like the worst possible way, because it's not like the product was bad bad in the sense that caused harm it just didn't sell very well um you know it's not like the ford pinto where you had to pull them because there was a huge design flaw in putting a flint bumper up against a gas tank but you just didn't make games that people seemed to really want or enough games that people wanted Mm -hmm. the nes classic has a pretty solid list of 30 games that i think is well worth the money but you're just going to discontinue it because, like, you can't keep up with the demand? Like, that's a problem that is solvable. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, Sounds sketch. And then, but then, like, they put the thanks thanks to all gamers or whatever on that Nintendo Pro mm-hmm. controller on the Switch. Yeah, right. And you, know, you move yep. the joystick down so you can see it. Um, very strange. Uh, I just... You know, and, and like, I guess my problem is unless their move is to like, and this would be, this would be like having like the most awesome foresight if this was a thing that happened, right? Let's say (laughs) this past Christmas, they were like, we're going to do the NES classic. It's going to be limited edition, but they didn't say Mm -hmm. that. They're just like, Hey, we're just going to stop production. Right. And then this upcoming Christmas, they're like, we're going to do the SNES classic. And release the Super Dude. Nintendo, and release right, and release the Super Nintendo with sixty mm-hmm. games, or maybe even more, and like maybe make the controllers longer than like sixteen inches because dumb. Uh, make it sixty bucks, make it a hundred bucks, whatever. Increase the library a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Limited time mm-hmm. only. NES Cla- Super NES Classic, Super Famicom Classic, right? And then next year. You do the N64 classic. The N64. And, and like you just and then the next year you Dude, could literally yeah. do the GameCube classic because at this point I like we already know you can I mean maybe GameCube might be might be harder but we already know you have the you have a, a wide library of games on virtual console that you could pick and choose you know 30 to 60 games Ooh. from and throw it on a basically Raspberry Pi you know throw it inside a mini case of the yeah. Super Nintendo, package it Boom. up and sell it. In Boom. a fucking heartbeat, I would buy all of them. I've buy given that, up I've yeah. given up trying to get an NES classic. I just don't think I'm going to find one, which is really frustrating because I I Not do for 60 bucks. 
No, not for 60 bucks. Exactly. Like, in the second they announced this, another stupid mistake is that every single person on eBay who's been, like, ripping people off is just going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to raise the price by, like, 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. And... Yep. But, like, hey, Nintendo, I know you're not listening, but if you were... I would just increase production on it, and then in next Christmas, I would think you would want to release the SNES Classic, and then I think the the next following Christmas, you would want to do that, because you have enough of a library that you could do that, and it'd be easy. It'd be so easy. And if you wanted to be even cooler, what you could do is is make the device... Because you again, you'd build you could build a mini virtual console into this thing because it wouldn't require that much to the point where you could potentially buy game packs to download, right? So it's like buy an additional five games, but you you know cater that list in a good way. Mm-hmm. Ten bucks, it downloads right to your NES Classic, and that's it, right? And like it, it would have to have the onboard memory to support it, and I imagine that there's some space for that to happen, but. It just seems like, um, it did. Uh, I like. It just seems like such a, a piss poor idea to to stop selling something that people want. Right. Like you're already you're already behind the curve when it comes to the console generation war, anyways. And the Switch probably mm-hmm. isn't your savior that you're looking for, but I think it'll do fine based on current mm-hmm. events. It seems like people who have bought it really like it, and it seems like the games that currently exist are pretty good. Obviously, like, we'll see what happens when Mario comes out, which is probably when I will get one. But I just, I don't know why you wouldn't continue to to let that play out, right? Like, it's not like you're going to be like, oh, Nintendo 3DS is, like, we didn't include, like, we, we didn't include a fucking charger with Nintendo 3DS. The, well, the new Nintendo 3DS. I don't want to. Yeah, that way, that. That's what it was cheaper. Yeah, like fir- first, first mistake: calling the the new Nintendo 3DS the new Nintendo 3DS. Right. Second mistake: not including a charger that everyone has, but then forgetting that when you go to trade it in at your friendly GameStop, you have to trade it in with a fucking charger, so they yep. can't and keep the charger. Anyone. Yeah, and like, and I remember when I went to go because I. Uh, that was it was Black Friday. I got two of them. I got one for myself and one for my brother. Um, his wife was one that actually was able to find them on Black Friday. I didn't go out because I had to work the next day at like okay. eight in the morning, and I was like, "Fuck that noise." But you know, yeah, I bought it, and then and bought, and then I went into GameStop and reminded myself immediately why I hate going to GameStop. <laughs> bought Pokemon. Which is literally the only cartridge game I own for it. It's the only 3DS game I own. Uh, and then they didn't have chargers. They didn't have chargers. I literally went in and the guy was like, oh yeah, we don't have, we're out of chargers. And I was like, how can you have the system and not the charger? Charger. But of yeah. course, well, we have chargers with the used ones if you want to buy a used one. Because our used ones come with chargers, but the new one doesn't. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So I bought one. I bought the game. And I bought one as in bought the game. Uh, and then had to order uh, a charger on the interwebs. So I didn't have a charger. I didn't use it for like the, f- like, I think I used it once and then the ba- battery died. And I was like, battery oh, died. And then I charged it at my brother's house because he's got a 3DS. And... I had them use Prime to order me one, and the only one we could find was a third-party one, so I bought that, and then I spent, like, extra money to finally buy a Nintendo-branded one, which I haven't even opened. It's still in the package, because the third-party one, oh, which geez. which came with, it came with a wall plug and a, and a car charging one, like a car charger thing. Hmm. For, it's just yeah. a USB cable, right? But it was yeah. neat, because I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, in the event that I'm in the car and not driving i guess i could charge my 3ds um true, true. and that's the like because it works that's the one i use like i just use that um nice. so but it was just like kind of frustrating that like that's a thing that you created like you created this mm-hmm. problem yourself like you you thought that saving like 10 true. bucks by not including a charger was like a really good idea yeah it did and it wasn't but 
whatever. Right. So, way to go, Nintendo. Mm -hmm. You're like 0 for 15. So, (laughs) yeah. So, if if you're in the market for an NES Classic, I hope you can find one. I hope you don't get screwed. And I don't encourage you to buy one on eBay for a ridiculous price because I just think that that encourages Mm -hmm. the behavior of people who buy stuff with the sole intention of reselling it. Like, I think that is is super frustrating. Like, you know, would I have bought yeah, two of them? Would I have bought, would I have bought two of them if I saw them available? Yes. Cause I would buy one to not open and buy one to hang on to, because I know it's going to be worth something eventually, uh-huh. but I'm not out there being like, I'm going to make a quick buck. Right. So like all those people who bought the, um, it's like that kid's toy. And it was the hat hatchimals, the hatching egg things. And uh, I guess the co- it got so bad with the people on eBay that like the company basically did something to change their like production and basically said like we're going and it got so bad that like e- they somehow got eBay to like force the sellers who had multiple listings yet can only sell them one at a time. Oh, okay. So basically, that killed their ability to sell them because if you can only sell mm-hmm. one at a time, you're constantly having to make new listings and things like that rather than putting up like 20 listings and yep. it kind of, that was like their interesting way of combating that problem and i'm surprised nintendo right. given that they like to interfere with everything anyone does like content creators they're not hassling ebay about the people scalping them right it's just funny you think they would like oh hey they're selling our product for a price that we're not getting yeah, we should stop that. No, no, no. Let's stop the people that are making money off of videos and stuff like that. Let's stop that. Um, so that was that was. I just wanted to talk about that on the NES Classic. I think it's I like my my gut reaction is like that's fucking stupid. Thanks because I really wanted one and now I'm just gonna yeah. kind of just not get one because it's just same. Yeah, not it's not one. worth it. Like it's not worth it to get screwed when you're gonna sell it for sixty bucks. It's not yeah. worth it to pay more than what you were like. I'm not what paying the price for full new console. Yeah, thing. exactly. Like I would rather yeah. buy a Switch or a PSVR or something other than that. You're right. If you're gonna spend that amount of money, might as well. But no, 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 no. So, um, Miss- yeah. So, all right. Final topic. Hit me with it. The Xbox Scorpio. Are we just that rec- confirmed that uh, that's the actual name? Like, are they calling it the Scorpio? I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's still just a code name. They're just going off that for now. It's probably going to have some stupid Xbox Life or I don't know, Xbox HD, some crap. I don't know, whatever. Xbox 4K, I don't know. Yep. What was it? Sometime last week, maybe. Week before that, I think they released the uh, specs. Yeah, that, I'm the- like so. I'm on Xbox's website. I've got the digital trends. Uh, <laughs> yeah, digitaltrends.com. I've got that. What's interesting <laughs> is so on the Xbox, uh, on the Xbox website, you know, Project Scorpio coming holiday 2017, which is cool. It means we're getting it probably around Christmas. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, world's most powerful console ever. Which like that's. Like uh, they, 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 it's not so that. much that it's stupid, but it's like no it shit. Like no, sh- uh, like what do you mean? You're yeah. about to release a console that's not like uh, what are we fucking Nintendo? The world's not as powerful console as the other <laughs> stuff on the market. Like no, it's like when it's like when like phones come out, they're like it's the most powerful uh, phone ever. I hope so. I right? really hope so because why I am I buying it if it's one. not better than the one I have now? Right? Ain't hey, God hand like. Yeah, goddamn dollars it better play something <laughs> like that's like that's like i ha- like i hate any company that says that like it's like with cars right like the world's most powerful sports car like yeah that's cool but like yeah obviously like you want to make it faster like you want to make it more you right. want to make it more efficient right like oh the best gas mileage we've ever had in this car well i fucking hope so it better if be. you hadn't noticed like the earth needs it okay like don't release a car that's the new model that gets worse gas mileage. Like, at least keep it fucking stat. Like, sorry, that's a thing. I'm going on a tangent, but like, that's a thing. Like, I hate that. The world's most powerful console. Like, of course, I hope the Xbox Scorpio is more powerful than an Xbox. Anyways, right, yeah. 
the most powerful console ever featuring six teraflops of graphical processing power. True 4K gaming as opposed to fake 4K gaming. Uh, and compatibility with Xbox One games and accessories. Again, I hope so. I yeah, hope so. Doesn't play anything else than why you release it. Yeah. Um, so it, so what I like is that they show the uh, exploded view of what the internals are of the system, uh, right? So like, we don't yeah. we don't know what it looks like on the outside, but I think the very <laughs> interesting part is that you can see that it clearly still has a CD-ROM drive. Like it clearly <laughs> has a disk drive. And that's most likely because it can play um, 4K UHD Blu-ray. Yeah, exactly. 4K UHD. Thank you. I was looking for that. Um, it's which doesn't even say it's this on HD. this. It doesn't even say that on this page, the Xbox page. It says that on my digital. Tr- oh <laughs> no, there it is. 4K UHD Blu-ray DVD. Sorry, yeah. I can't read. My bad. Um, so true 4K gaming, which I'm curious to know what what fake, yeah what fake 4K gaming is because I. Is that a like, shot at everyone else? I'm assuming or... it's a shot at I'm I'm assuming it's a shot directly at the PS4 Pro. Um, right. But I don't know because I would imagine that true 4K gaming exists on the PC without question. And it, it um, I'm pretty sure it has for a while. Yeah, so Get so that's sauce. Yeah, so that's fine. Um and then I'm going to move over to the Digital Trends article, this was by Will Fulton, April 10th, so six days ago. Project Scorpio versus PlayStation 4 Pro, Clash of the Titans. Ooh, fancy. Um, Specs. So, here we go. I'm going to run down this list. I assume if your list is different, tell me. CPU, Xbox, Project Scorpio. 2.3 2.3 gigahertz x86 AMD Jaguar 8 core custom processor. PlayStation 4 Pro. 2.1 gigahertz x86 AMD Jaguar 8 core. Yeah, much so we've got 200 megahertz of difference between the two mm-hmm. of them. Now, the fact that it says in parentheses custom next to the Xbox One versus the PS Pro makes me think that maybe there's some sort of overclocking or something that's happening. I don't really know. Probably. Clocking. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know. Um, there's not. A, there's no other information. It literally just shows me the the blanks blanket specs. Um, okay. The uh, GPU on the Xbox Scorpio says six teraflops, forty customized compute units at eleven hundred and seventy two megahertz. PS4 mm-hmm. Pro, 4.2 teraflops with 36 improved GCN compute units at 911 megahertz. So, yes, the Project Scorpio has a better graphics processor. It is not only 2 teraflops more, 1.8 if we want to get technical, but it's <laughs> almost another 300 megahertz faster, right? 1172 to 911 let me do the math just because I want to be correct so that nobody jumps on my ass. 911. 261 megahertz. Mm. How that translates into performance on a graphics processor, I don't really know, but obviously faster is better. Right. Memory. Uh, Scorpio has got 12 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. The PS4 Pro has 8. So again, mm. it's 33% more. Um. 12 to 8. So, uh, memory bandwidth, 326 gigabytes per second versus 218 gigabytes per second. Uh, they both have one terabyte hard drives. Doesn't say whether they're 5400, 7200, or solid state. Uh, optical drive says 4K UHD Blu-ray on Scorpio and just a Blu-ray on PS4. Um, and then yeah. uh, I've got price is suspected at 500 on the Scorpio, obviously the PS4 Pro is 400, and then wow. um, availability holiday 2017, whereas the PS4 Pro is readily available right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so this next part of it says, in terms of raw power, that makes the Scorpio more comparable to to computer GPUs like the Radeon RX 480. Uh, memory is also boosted, which gives the bandwidth from 326 to 218 over the Pro. 
Uh, difference in CPU power is much narrower, but the customized Jaguar cores in the Scorpio may squeeze out better performance in testing. Yeah, so clearly there's something about this processor that might make it better, even though on the outside it looks like it'll, just a difference of 200 megahertz. Right. So it'll probably probably be a legit 60 FPS rather than just saying, oh, it might run at 60 FPS. It oh no! I would I would imagine at this point the sixty FPS. Yeah. I, I mean, at this point, I would think that everything's got to go sixty FPS. Um, just as just just from the point where we're like we're hit, we've hit that point in the life cycle of both Xbox One and PlayStation Four. Like the developers got to be on board with sixty frames per second because with the TVs the way they are, it's going to probably become far more noticeable because the TV is going to probably make it look worse when it's 30, right? When it's um, 30, yeah. So, or not even so much when it's 30, but just like if the resolution's chunky or has issues, I imagine that would be you'll, more noticeable. Yeah, it'll be notes, yeah. It'll be more noticeable on a TV that's so much more sensitive to high speeds, refresh rates being mm -hmm. better. Etc. Etc. Et cetera. Et cetera. Better, yeah. um, what's interesting is they say with such a gap between GPU and memory, it is a safe bet that all things being equal, third-party cross-platform games should feature more detailed textures on Scorpio than on the PS4 Pro. <sighs> so, um, Scorpio's promises is to run 4K resolution at a steady 60 frames per second, and. All Xbox One games, including third party and those running at 1080p or lower, will purportedly be able to run at native 4K. Pro's record has been spotty. But 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 up, not constantly hitting 4K in practice. Digital Foundry's demo included a Forza game running in 4K while only using 65% of the console's power, suggesting that the hardware is capable of being the first truly 4K console. So that's the whole native 4K true 4k mm -hmm. comment um that they're making mm -hmm. it's not gonna be like a yeah you don't need a mode to do it we can actually just run it yeah um better support for four uh for users without 4k televisions basically some sort of hdr mode which the ps4 pro has but apparently has been according to this has been inconsistent with the ps4 pro even in first party titles it's another page of stuff. I'm clicking over to that now. Home theater support for that Blu-ray drive. <laughs> um, and let's see. Um, sorry, I just totally like had a brain fart trying to like read this. Um, <clears throat> Project Scorpio will feature... I'm hopefully just going to edit that part out so nobody will notice that there was like a blank mode of silence as <laughs> I totally had a brain fart. Um, Project Scorpio will feature a 4K Blu-ray optical drive similar to the Xbox One S. Although the mm -hmm. PS4 Pro is built specifically to support 4K gaming, it still only includes a standard Blu-ray player which is incapable of playing UHD Blu-ray discs. PS4 Pro can stream 4K video through apps such as Netflix and Hulu. Um, Scorpio also offers the same home theater experience thanks to Bitstream Audio through Dolby Atmos support. Hmm. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da. Providing stronger support for PSVR was the main selling point of the Pro. All versions of PS4 work with VR, but the Pro is capable of sharper and more detailed rendering. Graphical upgrades don't come automatically, so only games built specifically to take advantage of the pro can do so. Obviously, that was Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, reports have suggested that Scorpio will feature some sort of VR support. Uh, Microsoft's partnership with Oculus has led to rumors that Scorpio may pair with the Rift, which is already Windows 10 compatible and does come with an mm -hmm. Xbox One controller. That would be cool. Um, hmm. wouldn't probably sell it for me more because, nah. uh, like, to me, not like, and like, I, I I'm like, I'm kind of done reading this because I get it. Like, and, and this is because yeah. I'm very practical and I read it and I go, okay, cool. The Scorpio is going to be more powerful than, than the PS4 pro PS4. Right. Yeah. Um, 
great. Here's the thing. I buy mm-hmm. the console for the games and because all of the people that I play games with are on a particular console. So unless all of the people that I know Switch hop over. over to Scorpio, I don't plan on it. I bought the Xbox One. Right. I've bought games for it. I don't even mm-hmm. play it anymore. It has not been turned on in months because the Ouch. only game that I would have played would have been like Halo 5. Yeah, we should play. <laughs> I have to update the hell out of the console and probably that oh, game, game, and game. I would need Xbox Live. Um, oh, yeah. Well, it's a dollar right now, so... Oh, well, that's Just cool. You know. Um, you know, so so to... Like, I, I look at it and go, that's awesome that it's more powerful. Right, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's like... Eh. It's, it's to, to, like, and, and I, I've already seen people on both sides of the fence, which is like the worst Same. thing ever is just hating each other on Twitter about it. Like you're going to be the best, best fuck thing ever. Going to blow PlayStation out of the water. You guys suck. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Saw one dude, um, who tweeted at somebody and was like, don't fucking come back to the Xbox family. Like you walked out. Cause like the dude, I guess might have gotten a PlayStation pro to play like Ow. horizon. And like, that's, that's what that's you like. <laughs> And, and, like, I imagine this type of shit also happens on the PlayStation side, but, like, that's the kind of community you want to promote, like, where somebody wants to expand mm-hmm. their their gaming repertoire, mm-hmm. and you're going to, like, kind of soft ban them from the community because of that, like, because they're not fucking right. dying on the hill of one console only, like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't get that. Like, oh, never will. So, to me, it's just very, very dumb. And it's Mm -hmm. fine, do whatever you want, but I just. I don't. It's gonna be frustrating. Yeah. And it's not not so much frustrating, I guess. Just. I don't know. I like it's know. it no it's totally like it's totally frustrating because it's like what's the point like if you're that upset right. like if you're that upset that somebody wants to play more video games than just what's offered to them like you need to probably reexamine your attachment to this thing um because I like I don't hate on people who play Xbox I have lots of friends who only play Xbox and the sad reality mm-hmm. is that we just don't get to play together because I really can't afford to be buying two copies of games that I know I'm not going to play on both like I know that a lot of people you know, I have uh, friends who are Destiny streamers, right? Like Liger mm-hmm. and Sean Bartley. And like some nights they do Destiny on Xbox and some nights they do Destiny on PS4. And like now with Destiny 2 coming to PC, they're like, oh man, do I have to buy three copies of this? Because like I, oh. I can't, I can't not play on every version of it that comes Just... out because they like the game that much, but also because right. they want to make sure that their community doesn't get alienated because they right. only might play on one console. Mm-hmm. Like, I imagine it'll be interesting for people like Triple Rec, who have such a giant audience, that what's going to happen, right? Like, oh, it's <laughs> sub night, but we're playing on Xbox, and the subs that I've picked have ps4 or something like or pc like and then and then the whole kind of concept of like that means you have to be progressively playing each version so that your characters are always kind of in the same place so like do you do that by like playing a couple hours on each console a night or do you play like one night you do this console one like is that is is your schedule going to change based on when you play and what you play to now which console right right? so like you know Mm -hmm. Are we? Are you doing like PlayStation Fridays or you know Scorpio Saturday? Right? Like I don't, I don't really know how that's gonna play out for for content creators, right? Like I'm always thinking, how does this play out for them? Because like for me, I'm gonna buy the PS4 version. I'm not gonna buy the Xbox version. The PC version probably won't run great on the Alpha. So I wouldn't bother buying it, but bother. there's a potential chance that I might, mm. but probably not because I just don't really do that. I don't really buy multiple versions of games. Like I kind of just am gonna play the one and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. But it, but like that type of situation makes an, an interesting thing. Like because I, with Scorpio and Pro, like I know people who have multiple copies for both things. But like if if you know the game runs better on one, why wouldn't you just buy it on one? 
Like I'm, one, I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna fucking buy FIFA on two consoles. I'm gonna buy it on whichever one either more people are playing on or looks better. Mm-hmm. You know? Um the only thing like True. I th- I think what people miss out of the console generation war, and this is this is just my opinion on it, is that all that's been happening has been the most beneficial to us as gamers for the last, I would say, like four to five years. Because basically what has been happening is each time there's an iteration, right? The PlayStation 4 comes out and it comes out against Xbox One. And you're like, holy crap, they're both fucking awesome. They do all this crazy shit. No backwards compatibility. What the fuck's up with that? But we'll move past that. And mm-hmm. we're going to get all these sweet games. And then all of a sudden you get the Xbox One S. You get the Xbox uh, bumped up a little bit. Whatever. You get the PlayStation 4 mm-hmm. Pro where it's like, hey, it's a little bit better. We get the PSVR. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, I've been getting all these additional things. And now we're waiting on Xbox to be like, oh, by the way, Rift. You know, I mean, this again, I'm speculating. I'm not saying this is going to happen. Right, right, right. Oh, hey, by the way, that Rift you have for your PC, you can plug it into your Xbox Scorpio. Like, that would be mm-hmm. huge for a big demographic of people because those are the people sure. that bought the Rift when it first came out. And mm-hmm. now you can connect it with your Windows 10 and your Xbox Scorpio. Like, that would be enough, right? Rather than That's being like, let me, let me drop 400 on a Pro and then another 400 on mm-hmm. a on a PSVR when like I already have the like $800 Rift and a beast PC. Now I can just throw four to 500 on a Scorpio and bring it right over. Oh, right. But what I see as the biggest benefit to us as gamers is all this, this has done is create competition between the two of them. Cause I'm throwing Nintendo under the bus and saying, fuck you. Rip. They're forcing this awesome dynamic competition with each other where they have to make these things better and they become better for us so we win because we get better looking games we get faster games we get you know more stuff on our consoles because now they're like oh hey 500 gigs is not enough like here's a terabyte which is also not enough but moving past that you're getting better at it um Mm -hmm. you know they're kind of going back into that whole home theater experience because they're making sure that 4k ability for like netflix hulu tv sports things like where you might be watching that through your device instead of like an apple tv or a google uh chromecast thing where you're like putting it on your tv or or a a roku or a sling box right like they want Mm -hmm. these consoles to be kind of your one-stop entertainment system all in one yep but it's cool that we get to be in the moment where it's happening a lot faster than it ever did before. You know, True. the, the amount of time True. that would have elapsed between Nintendo and super Nintendo and N64, then to GameCube, then to, um, you know, then to Wii, then to Wii U, then to switch, the, switch. the like GameCube to Wii to Wii U to switch is such a, sh- it's, and I say shitty, it's not, groundbreaking right what they're giving it's not groundbreaking in what they're giving you it's just sort Mm -hmm. of groundbreaking in how they're giving it to you like Wii to Wii U is just like oh cool I guess you made it a little you made it a little rounder and Mm -hmm. you gave me like a tablet thing and then they were like oh hey we gave you a tablet game console Right, that you can take That's with you, so you and it go, has yeah. these disconnecting things, and hopefully the battery life is pretty good. But like, whatever, mm-hmm. um, you know. Whereas the difference between PS3 to PS4 was huge. The difference from Xbox 360 to Xbox One there, is huge. Yeah, and like now we're back in that. PS4 to PS4 Pro isn't that huge, except it unlocks the potential for another big jump. Whereas the jump from Xbox One to Xbox One S to Scorpio, I think will do the same thing, you know, because Scorpio, I think might, might have that rift attachment that'll be huge, or maybe they'll do something with HoloLens. We don't know, Mm -hmm. but that's... They you know, have, the, yeah, they have decisions they can make easily. Well, and just the technology is now probably easy. It's just because now we're on x86 platforms. Anyways, I imagine right. that this this becomes 
way easier to easier improve yeah. every iteration by a significant amount um and also maintain some sort of compatibility in the sense that you know where ps3 and ps4 have no backwards compatibility except for ps now which is mm. like thanks um thanks we'll for trying talk about that uh you know ps4 to ps4 pro to whatever ps5 or you know xbox one xbox one s scorpio I think there will be, you know, that those libraries will continue to extend. And the thing is, is because they're all built on the same platform and probably will be moving forward, that it probably allows them to have some sort of built in constant updating and rendering and things like that, where like the older games will look a little bit better than they do now on the newer, more powerful systems and kind of keep mm-hmm. that train going to a point, right. obviously, to one point, it won't you know, matter, but Mm -hmm. so like, so I I see this as, is exciting because it's going to create an environment where Microsoft and PlayStation 4 constantly have to be upping the ante amongst themselves in a way to benefit us as gamers to kind of keep our attention. Yeah, exactly. So, um, that's, um, that's, yeah. That's kind of it. That's kind of that's kind of like my point. That's... I think it's cool. Like factually, the Scorpio on paper is better than the PS4 Pro. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens when it actually comes out and they can do some like games testing on cross-platform mm-hmm. titles to see like how one performs better? Obviously, signs lead to Scorpio being better. I'm curious to see what happens. Um, Same. You know, that's to me. It's just exciting because it's a win-win for us. Like I don't know why people hate on it one way or the other, if you support one console and not the other, like it's a win-win because we're all going to get a better experience when we play games. True. Pretty straightforward with that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to call it. Um, yep. cause we're hitting, we're hitting the hour mark. And I was not <laughs> yeah. expecting to go that long. I was not honestly expecting this mm-hmm. podcast to go that long. Um, Neither was I. so that is it. Um, mm-hmm. again, you can leave comments on the YouTube video if you would like, if that's how you're listening to it. You can leave us a one star review on iTunes if you want. You can tweet us. I am at so after I said, Mike is at mtong1. You can tweet him, but do not follow him. Do not follow me. You can tweet at the, t- the, we have a podcast Twitter. It's at the DG cast. Um, if you would like to do that. Uh, and, <sighs> um yeah so that's that's this episode do you have any other final thoughts don't be a dick like it run with it um yeah so uh, again thanks for listening appreciate it um if you have questions obviously you can tweet at us if you have other information on scorpio that you've you found somewhere else like uh i i will be completely transparent i don't do a lot of totally investigative research on all these things i google i get a couple of the articles that pop mm-hmm. up i look at right. them um i read them Boom. not super thoroughly obviously i read them to completion but like kind of skim through the important parts you know to me, like to me i i see xbox's website i see digital trends digital foundry will eventually get more stuff on it but like if there's anything else that people have found that's very interesting or very telling about what we're going to be getting like obviously like tweet it at me like i'm totally down to read it um you know i'm not an xbox fan but i'm excited for xbox fans you're going to get something awesome whenever this thing is announced which i imagine they'll probably do a reveal at e3 and then announce the release date because if you're telling us holiday 2017 my guess is right now they're trying to figure out how they can accurately hit that supply and demand right 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 not pull a fucking Nintendo. I guarantee you they're going to not pull a Nintendo, but they're going to have They're going like to sell out. Yeah, they're going to be hard it. to find. Yeah, like suck it, Nintendo. This is how we're doing it. Right. Or this is how you should do it. Mm. So uh, that closing note has ended the Disconnected Gamers podcast episode 84. Mm-hmm. We will catch you on the flip.